In this example, we're going to see how even a brand new 3D person like me can figure out how to take advantage of two things. The plugin from Adobe that lets us access the Google 3D warehouse and also the wonderful plugins from Strata that let us play with those 3D models. So all I've done so far is I've downloaded the plugin from Adobe Labs and I've got it here and it's available through the automate command and I choose automate search Google for 3D models. And since I'm doing a little pirate theme here, we want to try and find a skull. So let's search for that. And here's the model that we're going to use. Now I've already downloaded this, just to, it doesn't take that long, but just so I already have it available. And here it is. So all I have to do is drag and drop like any other thing. Now this is a 3D model taking advantage of CX3 Extended, but I'm just going to take my move tool and shift, drag and drop it over so it is located in the center of my document. And in order to access the Photoshop 3D capabilities, I just double click on it and it gives me these controls. So first of all, I want to make it just maybe a little smaller and we're going to rotate it around a bit and get it looking the way we want, something maybe like that. But right now it looks kind of like plastic gray skull, not golden skull like the name of this fictitious book. So we need to make it look more like gold. And that's where we take advantage of our Strata plugin. So we go down to the plugins and choose Model in Edit. Now here we are in the software and obviously there are many, many things we could do including building models from scratch. But in our case, just for this example, we're going to show how powerful it is just to use the textures portion of this. So I'm just going to go in here and double click on the texture and look at all the options that are in here. Uh, first of all, we have different options for things like the glossiness. So this would be not very glossy at all and this would be highly glossy. And you'll see as soon as you do that, there's even some reflection there so we can play with that setting. But remember, we're trying to make this ultimately gold. So let's start trying to move in that direction. Let's first choose the main color we're going to use, kind of our goldish color. See how that looks and that's a little better. We want to also, we can play around with different settings to make less or more of the color noticeable, change the ambient lighting a little bit. So we can push that up or pull it back any way you want. All kinds of options are available and each time you can just sort of update and see we're doing that. It tells me not to use glow because that's not going to help in this particular case. Uh, now the other thing is that we're getting some reflection, a little specular highlight. We want it not to be pure white in this case but probably a color that's a little closer to our shade. So we're going to just pick a little light yellow, see how that looks there. So that's looking a lot closer to what we want. Down here in the environment menu, it's already showing that it's using a reflected environment. And that's what we're seeing in here. Now when we get to Photoshop, we'll see this a little more closely. We can also play around with the reflection settings to get a more extreme. Notice when I push the right hand side of this, it's getting a little less around the very outside edges. So lots of things that we can do in there to get kind of the results that we want. Down here at the bottom for micro polish, we can play with some of these built-in settings to see different kinds of effects for like almost like the way it's polished. And let's go. I think actually we like, I was playing around before, this titanium one gives me a really nice high reflection. So we'll, we'll go with that and now move that back to Photoshop. So back in Photoshop it updates and there's our beautifully reflected skull. It's already starting to look pretty cool. Uh, if I go back to these ones we we're looking at before, you'll see as I'm moving it, see this is pretty cool. Look at this. When I move you can actually see the reflection. Look at how that's changing on the fly. That's pretty darn cool. So we're going to say we like that effect here. But the other part that makes this really interesting is that Photoshop has taken that reflected env environment that was in the plugin and it's available here. And we can actually edit this environment to apply it on the fly because it's right there available. So for example, let's take a look at the text in here that was created previously. See how it's got kind of that little rainbow effect. Let's zoom in a little bit closer so you can see it. It's got that little bit of rainbow kind of almost like when metal is heated up and it starts to change color or something like that. Well that's easy to do because we have this environment. We just have to double click on it and it opens a separate document that has the photo that was used to create that reflection. And we can edit this even using layers so it'll update on the fly. Watch this, it's pretty interesting. So I'm just going to add a new layer and I want to get that multicolor kind of look so I'm going to take my gradient tool 
and use one of these rainbow gradients. Now mine were already loaded. If yours weren't, you'd have to go in here and find them in this list down here. But we're just going to use this one and hold down the shift key and just drag a short little line to create a little rainbow effect. Now we want it to have some movement to it, so we're going to take our smudge tool with a fairly large brush, just being careful not to touch the very two ends of it, because we want those to join back up. But we're going to just do some smudging, which of course is going to change the colors a little bit, make them a little blurrier. I'm using the smudge tool, of course I could also use something like Liquify if I wanted to do this, but let's just see what that does. Let's close it, save it, and right away, check it out, there's our little reflection in there. If we want to take that a step further, let's go do some further editing. Let's take that same layer, duplicate it, move it straight down, and let's free transform it to make it even skinnier. Hit enter, and we'll also lower the opacity so it's there, but it's a lot more subtle. And the last thing we want to do, remember our text here has a bit of a dark edge to it, so we're going to add another layer, go back to our gradient tool, and this time use black to transparent. So I can just go to the bottom here, click and drag part way up, and that's going to add a nice dark edge to it. So once again, we'll close it, save it, and see how it updates. Now, this is what I think is really cool about this, is when you go back and start playing with it, look at how the reflection updates on the fly. So you can really get it to a position you like and see that reflection. If it's not quite right, you just double click on that environment and go back to it. Now we don't have to stop there because of course this is still a layer so we could add normal things like maybe for example we want to add a stroke around the outside however not red but black and probably not quite so obvious maybe make it a little less uh, of a size couple of points and lower the opacity we also want to add a glow to it but in kind of that dark glow an easy way to do that is to add a drop shadow change the spread and the size a little bit and then just take the move tool and position it on the outer side and we'll just probably lower the opacity a little bit. So pretty darn cool we've gone from a basic gray skull that looked kind of interesting and very quickly thanks to the Strata 3D Edit plugin have gone in and added that wonderful gold environment and then taken it back to Photoshop 3 Extended to take advantage of its 3D capabilities to edit the environment and add things to it. Pretty interesting way to work with 3D objects in Photoshop. Check it out.